Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you how to make cool vocal chops for Psytrance. So this is the project that I'm currently working on. This is a project where I'm implementing my new bass technique, as you can see from the bass pads that I explained in the last video. This is the one with the delayed sub, but for now our focus is going to be on this vocal loop here. So you can hear a very abstract kind of vocal sound. I'll also show it in context. Now, if we open this up, we can see that this is actually made out of two different sounds. We start off with this sound here. But the main vocal loop actually comes from the second layer here. Now both of these sounds use the same kind of technique in that there is a chopped up sample at the start here. And in this case, the sample that I started off with was this one right here. And you can see that through some processing, we actually turned it into those bandpass plugs. So I've just turned off all of the processing so we can go through it together. But first here is the source sound that we start off with after we have sliced it. You can hear for now it's fairly quiet, so later in the chain we have to boost the volume of it. But the other thing that you can hear is that it's fairly plucky. And the reason for that is I just want this to be a trigger for the delay trick that I'm going to use later on in this processing chain. I then applied an auto pitch. This is just for tuning to make sure that it works with the key of the track. Then here we have our main LFO which we use for the movement. As you can see the settings are here. It's just generating a random signal and we're sending this around a couple of filters in this chain. The first one being this one here and this is going to generate a random tone. Then next up we have this echo which is timed very specifically in the sense that the time is the exact length needed for one oscillation of one of the keys in the frequency that you want. In this case we're in A sharp so what I did is I took 1000 and divided that by the frequency of A sharp. There are websites available online where you can check out the frequency. In this case I went with this one or maybe I went with one above. Obviously different octaves are going to give you different sounds but in this case it really extends that plucky sound that we created. I then decided that the bandpass feeling wasn't enough so I used the dry wet rack right here and I used another version of the filter. They use the same modulation so they are tied to the same frequency as you can see. Then finally for our final shaping we have an EQ which is also doing 12 dB of gain, really giving it that volume boost that it needed. Another 5 dB of gain is coming from the saturator which is also clipping it and then finally we have a dimension expander to just add a little bit of extra space to the sound. Before we continue, I do want to say if you want to support the channel, you can do so by liking the video and making sure that you're subscribed. Also, you can check out my products on Gumroad or check out my Patreon for early access to videos and discount codes to my products. Now let's get back into the video. Now for the vocal, it's the same thing. I just used a different starting sample, obviously from a vocal. They wanna be like my team, but they can't be. So go and run at home back to your mammy. Little bit of a strange vocal line to choose for side vents, but it does actually work for this technique because obviously we're chopping it up. We again have this sliced up version of the vocal. Actually, I didn't explain how I do the triggering, which we can do right now. If we look right here, we have an arpeggiator, which is set to random other. And that works because in the MIDI clip, we have all of the notes selected. So all of the notes are being played. As you can see right here, all of the notes are played at the same time, which then get randomly chopped up by the arpeggiator. So without any of the effects, it sounds like this. Again, we're going to need a vocal boost at some point, but I also wanted to get a little bit extra tonality out of it. So I used the same delay that I had from the other sound and just applied it here. Yeah. 
you can hear that on the vocal you get that really nice robotic feeling and then here we have another filter which is tied to the LFO that we saw before in this case we are also using the dry wet rack but we're using a different LFO to actually change the dry wet over time which changes it from kind of like a vocal sound to more bandpass plug sound because obviously the bandpass is being introduced into the sound so you can hear that the bandpass effect kind of increases and decreases over time <laughs> We then have another EQ for tonal shaping and again a 12 dB volume boost. We also have the same saturator as before, both for 5 dB boost as well as clipping. And then finally a stereo spread to control the stereo field. In the same way that the dimension expander did for the other sound. And finally we have a little bit of group processing. We have our main actual delay here. We have a reverb and then we have a final EQ also removing any of the low end that we don't want to clash with our bass line. And all of that together is going to sound like this. So overall, a very cool sound. I hope that you enjoyed this and that you learned a new technique. If you did, let me know by leaving a like. And if you're new here, make sure that you're subscribed. But that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.